So before we start really getting into how to plan lessons, I believe that there are three components that you need to keep in mind when you are approaching lessons. And that is, what are the grade levels you are providing lessons for? Number two, what type of schedule do you have to give lessons? And number three, how much time do you have to do those lessons? You guys, this is so essential. And when you're thinking about school counselors, school counselors can be placed in an elementary school setting, in a middle school setting, and also in a high school setting. So you're gonna wanna make sure that when you are looking for lessons, you are finding lessons that is gonna be appropriate for the school setting that you are servicing. Just to give you guys an example, I am a primary school counselor and I service kindergarten through second grade. So when I go and I find lessons, I I want to make sure that I'm finding lessons that is going to be suitable for that particular age group. So for an example, I am not going to go and look for high school lessons to deliver to my primary students. Okay, that is not applicable. All right, and it's going to be way above their head. Um, so and you guys get the gist of it. So you really want to just pay attention to the lessons that you are finding to make sure that it is going to be the right lessons for them. I also want to bring out when you are finding lessons, you want to make sure that it is going to be age appropriate. So though I have kindergarten through second grade, I am not going to find a second grade lesson to give it to, to deliver it to my kindergartners. Neither am I going to take a kindergarten lesson and deliver it to my second graders. So you want to make sure that you are conscious in when you are providing those lessons for your students that it's going to be age appropriate. The next thing that I want us to look at is what type of schedule do you have to give lessons? And you guys, this is very important because in understanding your schedule will determine how many lessons that you need to come up with to deliver it to your students for the rest of the school year. I have met school counselors that teach lessons once a month. I've met school counselors that teach lessons every single day because they are in the related arts um, rotation at the elementary level. I have met school counselors that had a schedule where two or three days out the week they would teach lessons and then the other two or three days in that week they focus on individual and small groups and 504s and those type of things. So in understanding your schedule that you have, you will be able to fathom of how many lessons that you need to come up with for your students. And you'll be able to get that schedule and everything when you talk to your principal and really when you just do the interview with you know that particular school they're hopefully are able to lay out everything that you need as far as in grasping what it is that you need to do at that school so just to give you guys an example of my schedule i taught classes monday through friday and it was with the kindergarten first grade and second grade classes and so by the end of the week i taught 15 classes total so I had to make sure that I have provided enough lessons that would be suitable for all of those grades. If you are one that only have to teach lessons once a month, you know, you might only need to gather 10 lessons. Or if you teach twice a month, 10 times two, you might need 20 lessons. If you teach lessons weekly, you're gonna to have to gather more lessons. So it's very important to understand what your schedule is. The next thing I want us to look at is how much time do you have to deliver your lessons? So when I came into the position that I'm in now, in January, I taught classes once again, Monday through Friday, and my schedule was from 10.30 to 11.30, I taught first grade, from 12.40 to 1.40, I taught uh, kindergarten, and from 1.45 to 2.45, I taught second grade. So I had an hour long with these students in order to deliver a lesson, and so, I had to make sure that whatever lessons that I found, that it was going to take the minimum amount of time to do the lesson and the activity need to be about 45 to 50 minutes. And if I could find a lesson that lasts the whole hour, then that makes it even better. And the reason why I want you guys to be conscious of your time, because you don't want to choose a lesson that is going to be, you know, a lesson that's not going to last long and you have all of this idle time especially if you are an elementary school counselor because if you have too much idle time you're going to have kids bouncing off the walls and doing things and 
So you don't want to run into that. So you want to make sure that you understand the time frame that you have with those students in choosing a lesson. So for an example, I knew that I had an hour long window with those kids. So I didn't want to find a lesson that was 15 minutes long because what are the kids going to do for the rest of those 45 minutes? You know, that wasn't going to be beneficial for them, neither me. <laughs> so I had to make sure that I did at least 45 to 50 minute lesson, which includes the activity, because usually when the kids first came into my room, we did like a warm up or, and also I did like an introduction video to the lesson, which took up that 15 to 10 minute um, time that we weren't uh, starting the lesson. So you want to just keep that in mind is that you don't want a whole lot of downtime with the students because then you're going to have them, they're going to start getting antsy and wondering, okay, what we're going to do next. And even for my middle school and high school counselors, you know, when you guys are delivering lessons, you do still want to be mindful because you want to make sure, especially if you don't teach lessons all the time, like on a weekly basis, and maybe you do it once a month or twice a month, you really want to choose lessons that's going to fit in that timing so that you can catch their attention, deliver it so that, you know, you're, they're able to get everything they need out of that lesson. Because if you end up choosing a lesson that is too long and you want to roll it over, it's going to roll over into the whole next month and they're going to forget everything that you have prepared for them or that you taught them. So you just wanna keep that in mind when you are not teaching lessons as frequent as you know someone that teaches weekly. Now for me, let's just say I chose a lesson that was an hour and a half long. That would be beneficial for me still yet because I am on a weekly rotation where I weekly teach lessons. I could just roll it over into the next week. You know, so you just have to get a feel of your schedule. I know I have another example when I was doing my internship and I was with my school counselor supervisor. She had taught lessons Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And the other two days she would do like individual counseling in small groups. But when she taught her lessons, you know, her days would be filled with just less teaching lessons back to back because she only had 20 minutes long. She was an elementary school counselor and she taught kindergarten through fifth grade and they were 20 minute long lessons. So by the end of the day, she taught 12 classes. So she didn't have no time to waste. She also had to make sure that whatever lesson that she chose wasn't gonna be a really long lesson. However, she tried to find lessons that would fit in that time frame and would be beneficial for those students. So those are the three components that I want you guys to keep in mind when you are thinking about lessons. So now we're gonna get into how to plan lessons. So go ahead and click that video um, so that you can go and watch that one. Thank you.